challenge has been issued, and I accept. Today is a challenge in solidarity, to who words like fine detail really mean I'm not doing that. It takes a steady hand to do some of the things I do. Fine line, freehand, dotting eyes and teeth. Things that can feel impossible to some people. But there are techniques that don't really require a fine point. And today, I've been challenged by Ben to paint a model using nothing but dry brushing and washing, starting from a xenophil. And just to throw another monkey wrench into the works, I'm only going to be using my radius brush. For something like this, I have to pick the right model. And the one I'm going to be going with this week is something that would fit in perfectly with Ben's alien hives army. I really like the look of this mortar beast. He has two main parts that need color, the body on the underside and the plates on the upper side. But we can pick out a few extra details along the way. I also have a small force of alien hives going on now, so I want to paint this one to match my current color scheme. So I'll be going for these colors, but using only the techniques that are part of the challenge. And to give myself a disadvantage, use just the worst brush I have for this. Because I'll primarily be painting with washes and dry brushing, I want to show my process for mixing a wash out of paint. It's going to require a few additives, but they're quite easy to get a hold of. First is some mixing medium. I was able to get this matte medium at Walmart for around $5, and there's so much of it, I'd be very surprised if I ever used it all. When it comes to diluting down pigments and paints, if we use just water, the polymer that would hold those pigments together would be too thin and you end up with banding as the water dries and sometimes dusty looking recesses. So we need to dilute them with some of that polymer so there's something that binds them when they dry. Next is an optional one, but because I use an airbrush, I have it anyway, and that is a thinner. I personally like scale 75s myself, but lots of well-known companies have them. While we can use water to thin the paint and as long as the medium's in there, it should be fine, a thinner will just help retain the structure of the bonder and pigments as well as getting it to a fluid consistency. It also has a different surface tension, so it'll help the wash behave a bit better than water. And finally, we need something in the wash that will stain. And for that, we have inks. Any acrylic ink would be fine, and you can get them pretty cheap from local hobby shops. A little bit goes a long way, so one pot or bottle will last a long time in your hobby. Despite my over-reliance on wet palettes because of my humidity, washes are actually best created in a weld dry palette. Wet palettes tend to draw up extra moisture into a thin mix like washes while you're painting, which dilutes the wash further, meaning you can end up with uneven coverage. In a dry weld palette, nothing should change the dilution between start and end, so should look more even on the model itself. To do the mix itself, it might take a bit of trial and error, but I like to start with a small dab of my pigment, then add the ink, because the ink will change the color a bit. Without the other additives, this is the time to get the color you want right. And don't be afraid to mix hues either. A purple ink into a brown pigment can give a nice shade to your leathers. Next I mix an equal part of the medium. This will dilute the paint and ink and make them more transparent. Then finally, the thinner or water. Thinning it until it's at a consistency you want to work with. You could keep it a bit thick for control, or thin it down to be more like washes from the pots you're used to. What is a base coat if not a thick, opaque wash? And to prove it, I'm going to use the same recipe I just showed you to make my base coats. Starting with some brown paint and brown ink, then mixing in just a bit of medium and thinner. It's all about amounts, and this is as much a wash as it is a base coat. This is going to cover the underside of him, so I'm covering everything up to the ridge of his back plates. And I'm not going to worry if I'm sloppy here either, because the edges where the two parts meet are going to get covered with all sorts of xenophils and dry brushes. Any overlap is meaningless, so don't worry if you go outside the lines a bit. I'm also going to do the upper cannon with this brown, as it'll be a bone color later on. Because this base coat is also a bit on the thin side, once it dries, I want to do it a second time, just to really block in this color. For the top plates, I want to start with a dark terracotta, so use a red oxide and a black ink to darken it, adding medium and thinner in amounts equal to the first mix. This goes on all the obvious plate, but also on the ball-like parts here, 
I'll be making these a different color later, but for this first part, you might as well get it now. For the actual zenithal itself, I'm just going to simulate the spray of a spray can with my airbrush, pulling the needle back so that it becomes a single action brush, meaning the only control I'd have over it is the airflow, just like a spray can. Spraying the model itself from the front and a bit to the sides, but allowing the shadows to fall backwards towards his tail, trying to be light with it, just a few quick sprays. Now that we have a base and a highlight to wash over, we can actually refine this underlayer a bit. I'll start by doing a reverse dry brush with the same colors as the underlayers, creating a gradient back towards the shadows. To do a dry brush, it's a pretty simple technique in which you dry off your brush, usually an older or cheap brush on a paper towel. Then load a bit of paint onto it, straight from the bottle, tube, or pot, no thinning needed. Then rub it into the paper towel until the bristles are dry, but still contain a bit of the pigment. Then rubbing it across the ridges of your model, those pigments will be picked up by the details while the valleys are inaccessible. You can actually get pretty precise with it by only targeting areas you want the pigment to get picked up, which is what I'm doing here. By using the same base color after the zenithal, I'm turning the zenithal into a gradient with the dry brush, so target the areas that I want to be darker. For the brown, it was his lower legs and jaw, while for the plates here, I want to create shadows along the lower parts of the plates, towards where the two colors meet, other than in places that are really tall ridges like along this edge here. There will be more dry brushing later in the highlight sense, but this is all I'll be doing here for now. The best part about washes is that if the mix is right, they're quite mistake proof. The hardest part is usually waiting for it to dry properly, which makes washing great for quickly batch painting models because they'll dry while you're washing the others. For this guy, I got two wash colors going on to him. First will be for the body. It'll be a dark green mixed with some yellow and brown, along with some brown ink for the staining. Then using the medium and thinner to get it to wash consistency. Without overloading my brush too much meaning it should be soaking the bristles, but not flooding it, I just apply it to all the brown parts, other than his back cannon. The idea behind the wash is twofold. Tint the color towards the green, but also make it dark in the recesses. So though it seems like to achieve that I could just flood those areas, it's actually better to make it as even as possible. Flooding tends to dry a bit thick and weird still. So instead, if you want an area darker, it's best to simply do two coats of your wash than trying to get it all done in one go. For the plates, I'm using a purple paint with a bit of black mixed in, as well as some purple and brown ink. I use the black and brown because I don't want the purple to be super saturated, but instead more dull. The plates are quite simple, and the wash pools exactly where you'd expect it, but I also wash against the underside of the ridges, where the two colors meet. With the green that dried there earlier, and the dark purple doing the same, it should give me a black line without having to worry about trying to make those colors line up against those edges. First off, I want to deal with the nodules on his back here. I can only assume this is where his body makes the ammo, so I think it should be shown off a bit. Maybe make them fleshy to give the guy a more natural look to him. So I'm starting with a bit of a heavy dry brush, a mix of red oxide with white to get a fleshy pink, brightening up the bulbs with this like the zenithal did for the rest. To wash this, I want to add some magenta to it, as magenta is pretty much THE color for making things look fleshy without getting too pink. So I mix some magenta, some red oxide, and some purple ink to get the color for my wash, then the additives. Magenta and the purple ink should be quite staining, so should not only wash, but give the pink skin a tint towards the purple magenta hue. I'll also feather out the edges a bit by washing off my brush, sapping out some of the moisture on a paper towel, then just pulling some of the wash away from the edges to blend it into the surrounding area. For the second coat, I wanted to give it a bit more depth, so added some more of that purple ink into the wash, so that this second one would appear darker in the deeper recesses, essentially layering washes. For the cannon, I want to make it a bone like I have on all my other Alien Hive models. So dry brush a bone color onto the front of the cannon, first with a bit of brown mixed in, then again with a pure bone to give it a bit of a layering transition. Then using a more reddish brown with a bit of black and brown ink, make a wash to start bringing it all together. Doing one thin layer at first, then once it dries, add a bit of magenta into the mix and do another one, but more towards the base of the cannon where it comes out of his back. I want to do one last thing to make his eyes look special, and this is where choosing the worst brush I have was a bad idea. But here goes. I get my brush ready with some light blue I get by mixing just blue and white, mostly with the white though. 
I only use the corner of my brush to try and keep the area I cover around his eye to a minimum, so I have to do this quite a bit to make sure I get a good dense layer around his eyes. For the wash, a dark blue mixed with some blue ink, and this gets dabbed just around the eye area, giving it a bit of a light effect. The last thing I can do is add a bit of spice with some of the washes. Change the hue in a few places just to break up the miniature and give it some atmosphere. So I'll make a wash with a light yellowish brown adding a bit of a brown ink. I use this to add a few patches around his plates and legs. Not very big, but just something to shift hue a bit to create a bit of light or a discoloration of the body. Basically just an easy way to break up some of the colors so they're not too uniform. The beauty behind washes and dry brushing are that the work tends to get done for you by the sculptor. You don't have to pick out the highlights or shadows as everything just falls into place. Which means the hardest part of this for me was actually the brush. Synthetic brushes, as they wear down, develop a curve at the tips of the bristles and don't hold paint exactly like a natural hair brush might. So trying to get anything accurately for me was going to be impossible. But that's why this model was on my side for this challenge. Other than the claws or face, I didn't have to get too detailed. But that doesn't mean you can't. To further show how this dry brushing and washing might work with a normal brush, I did up a model with a bit more separation and details. Something from my misprint pile. Starting over a regular white on black Xenophil Prime, I used green, brown, purple, and a few mixes to do some simple base coats. Then did my second Xenophil then picked out some additional colors and shades with a few dry brushes or one swipe layering. Then finished again with full washes for every part. The only real difference between this one and the Alien Hives model was that I used an appropriate brush for it. Please subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this one or just other fun things to do with painting miniatures. And until next time, enjoy your own painting journey.